Well, today we're here with the Atlantic City Rescue Mission in Atlantic City, New Jersey. That's Debbie, who works here. She's, she's going to tell us a little bit about this association. It's actually a Christian-based association, and a lot of their funding comes from help from the community. So in a lot of our situations where we're looking at how do we help, over 66 percent comes from the community. 66 percent. So we're actually looking at trying to help people. And if you're part of a community, you want to probably help. So will you tell us a little bit about this organization and tell us how people could help? Absolutely. Well, first of all, we've, we're getting ready to celebrate our 50th anniversary in another year. So we're gearing up for that. And we've been here at this location for the last 30 years. And this organization really would not run without the community. The 66% that you mentioned is financial donations. So those are individuals, Perfect. churches, um, organizations that believe in what we do and want to help the homeless and those in need. So those are financial, but there's so many other ways that people help here. Um, People give uh, clothing, they give personal care items, Boy Scout, Girl Scout troops collect um, food, bake cookies, you know, do special projects at holidays, at, you know, bring in Easter baskets for the children. I mean, I could, there's just there, hundreds and hundreds of things that happen. Um, and then people come and volunteer. We have a very large volunteer force and they might come once a month, they might come two times a week. Some people come, you know, every week for the last, you know, 15 years doing reception work, doing um, help serving on the line, helping us with um, calling people for, you know, to let them know that we're here. It runs the gamut from, you know, our development department all the way down to our frontline services. We have assistants that help us with, um, you know, with the clients and do transportation for us and pick up clothing donations. So, I mean, there are so many ways that people help us. We do, in fact, I'm looking at your list of services here and it's, mm -hmm. it's enormous uh, everywhere from, min in fact, you have to attend chapel every day if you're here, correct? If, it's, it's a voluntary, um, you know, uh, situation with the vast majority of people, but if you're in our programs, if you have joined the work readiness program or if you join the overcomers program, it is a component of those programs. Of those programs. And of course we, you know, certainly it's encourage everybody to to do so, but um, it is it is voluntary unless you're in one of the programs. There's no, you have the HOPE program, you have the farm program, you have the prison re-entry program. Mm -hmm. That's that's not getting people to go to prison, no. right? <laughs> Coming out? <laughs> Re-entry into the community. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we don't want to prepare yeah. the people to go there. We want to prepare yeah. them when they come out. Exactly. Well, the, but the farm program actually is a place where a lot of people give of their time. We have a lot of volunteers, particularly youth groups that come from different um, churches or come just uh, different civic organizations that want to give their time. And we have a farm that's uh, south of here. But um, last year we were able to harvest uh, over 30,000 pounds of uh, of vegetables and That's we use the you know the produce here and then we were even able to give it out in our food baskets for to the community people when they come in to get food so really there are so many opportunities in a nonprofit and certainly a nonprofit like ourselves that exactly. where you can really either give of your time give of your talent we have people who come who have you know talents in art people students who come that you know tutor the children because homeless children, you know, historically um, lag behind educationally because they've moved from place to place to place. And so just having that little bit of extra help in the evening when, you know, the mom is, you know, really overwhelmed with all the stresses of, of being homeless and all the things that she has to take care of, having that extra helper come in and take care of that little piece of doing homework has been a blessing, you know. That, that does sound like one. Well, let's take yeah. a small yeah. tour. Sure. Down, down the uh, the aisle, there's quite a few different rooms. You have a section for men and women, correct? Yes. Um, the third floor is for the women, and 
that is for our Family Life Center, which is our moms and kids, and we have room for up to 11 uh, families. Usually that runs about 25 kids. The most we've ever had was 50 kids, and that was, that was quite an experience. Oh, I'm certain. <laughs> I'm certain. And this, this is our main dorm for this single uh, women, and what that means is women that are here without children, um, and that's anywhere from the age of 18. The oldest person that we've ever had here was 91. So that's something that I think a lot of people don't realize or think about is that the faces of homelessness, people have a, an idea in their mind, a stereotype of a exactly. you know, homeless person, you know, seeing them out on the street. But there are so many different causes and so many different, um, you know, situations that can bring somebody. Our statement, I might even be on our literature, is that homelessness can happen to anyone. Exactly. And a lot of people don't realize that until they find themselves in a difficult situation themselves and then they're like, you know, I see how easily a set of traumas or, you know, a very serious divorce or, you know, deaths in the family or a spouse passing away and not having enough financial resources for yourself exactly can cause you to fall into a situation like this. So that's all part of the education that we really like to to do is to kind of really change, you know, people's perception of of the homeless and realize that they are, you know, they could be your neighbor. We had some nursing students here earlier today and the person that I had come by to like talk to them that was a client, it was somebody that she went to high school with. And so it, it's that close, you know, it's really that close and people really need to, um, you know, put it in a different context than I think it is and that would go a long way to opening up avenues of help for the you know for the homeless for the homeless well there you have it and Debbie has helped us understand a lot about how you can help in the community Absolutely. if you're trying to build a resume and you want to spend the summer going to work at McDonald's and serving hamburgers it may make you a couple of dollars an hour but you probably won't learn a lot so if you want to jump on board and help in the community it will help you raise your, your resume value. So you'll be able to tell somebody, I worked for Debbie, I actually worked in the community and I helped a lot of people not just served hamburgers and made people sick. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, thank you so much oh, for the interview. So we've we've, we've we appreciate appreciated it. Coming. And let's try to help out in any way that we can. Okay.